for a human being, a tool is a physical object used by a robot to process parts. For a robot, a tool has a coordinate system, which enables the robot to move to desired positions. The tool also comes with physical data, crucial for the planning of correct acceleration and deacceleration, thereby enabling the robot to stay on its calculated path. Note that for the lead-through function of collaborative robots, you also need to define the weight of the tool. Let's have a look at how the robot reaches a position. This is how we see it in reality, but what really happens here? Let's have a look at the coordinate system. Here, the robot moves with its tool coordinate system to the position. We can also see a coordinate system overlay on the part. You should now have a better understanding on why a tool coordinate system is important. Let's continue with a close-up of the robot moving to the position. Watch closely as the robot moves to the exact position with the X, Y, Z directions in perfect alignment. We now know that the tool coordinate system is aligned to a position. Let's see another example on why we need a tool coordinate system. Here, the robot performs an operation called reorienting. In the coordinate system, there is a zero point where the X, Y, Z directions cross. This zero point is called TCP for tool center point. In the example, the TCP is fixed. This is what happens without the defined tool coordinate system. It is impossible to keep the point in the same position. Let's see another example on why reorienting is important. Pay close attention to this robot reorienting. Let's have a look at this robot reorienting. Once reoriented, the robot can stay in position until you don't need it anymore. It is important to reorient as little as possible to save valuable production time. How do we define a tool? We have mentioned that a tool has a coordinate system and that it has some physical properties. Let's have a look at the coordinate system. There are lots of different tools out there. Some are straight, some are bent. Three methods are used when defining a tool. Here are some examples of tools requiring different methods. With the coordinate system, you need to know where it is located. That is, you need its origin or reference position to define another coordinate system. So for the tool coordinate system, we have the reference position at the flange of the robot, the so-called wrist coordinate system. The origin of a tool coordinate system is called TCP, Tool Center Point. Let's continue with how to recognize what kind of tool is being used. For TCP default orientation, we don't need to mind other orientations relative to TCP since the wrist coordinate system is located directly at the flange. As you can see, there is no orientation at all. Let's have a look at the TCP plus Z direction. Here we have the shift in position plus one rotation. Note that the rotation is always in the Y direction. Let's continue with illustrating TCP plus ZX. Here we are looking at a shift in position plus two rotations in X and Z directions. With this method you define your directions. Note that the Z direction must be the working direction, since ABB defines it that way. Now that we know where the reference is, we can start defining a TCP. Let's have a look at the straight tool. As you can see, the directions of the reference and the tool coordinate systems are the same. This is called default oriented, regardless of what coordinate systems you're referring to. Here, we only have an offset in Z. This method is called TCP default oriented. These tools are very easy to handle if they are really straight. Just get the length from the tool's technical data and enter it in the Z field of the tool frame on the flex pendant. If you need to define the TCP manually, 
then just continue watching on how to define a TCP with the second method. There you take the first three positions of the robot, then in define orientation you set the TCP default orientation method. And that's it. Let's have a look at the second method of defining TCP called TCP plus Z. For the third method, TCP plus ZX, start by repeating the first three steps in the second method. Then click Next in the Flex Pendant menu. Then choose the method TCP plus ZX. Repeat the fourth step as in the TCP plus Z method. Note that in the video showing the virtual robot, you instantly get to the positions. In real life, you of course need to jog the robot manually. <laughs> 